Rockars would like to welcome Vince Albano from the band Cashmere. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? Hey, bud. How are you? Very good, very good. Uh, let's get into, you know, some of your past uh, history of the band Cashmere, when it started. You know, you know, did you try to get a record deal, whatever? Uh, well, we spoke before. Um, I know you know a little bit about the history of the band. Uh, we were together when we were kids. Uh, played basically uh, the whole East Coast. Um, uh, we were more of a, I guess, a hair metal band. You might consider us back in the day. I wouldn't really consider us that because our music was kind of progressive at the time. Um, but, you know, we did our thing. And we ended it probably about uh, the age of about 21, 22. Uh, went out to live our lives and, you know, have families and, and get jobs, real jobs, you might say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then we were next back from uh, the owners of Lemoore's when they had their reunion uh, probably about three or four years ago. Um, us, Anvil, the ex-White Lion at the time, but they didn't show up, uh, and a couple other bands. Um, we did it, we had fun, and we said, hey, you know, let's give this another shot. Cool. And that's what we've been doing for the last three or four years, trying to reestablish ourselves, and, you know, obviously we're still playing original music, writing our own music, and, uh, you know, in that sense, we're trying to really take what we've written in the last three years, you might say, and you know, keep the constant evolution of the sound going on. So, you know, we're trying to get that more of today's sound with the, you know, the familiar cashmere theory of, you know, having some catchy hooks that people can walk away singing. Cool, cool, cool. And you're working on a new CD as we talk. Uh, I guess we are. Um, we are working on, not the CD, I don't want to say the CD, but we're working on writing the, all the new tunes for the upcoming CD. Cool, cool, cool. So... How many you got done, or uh, any uh, other info you could give us about that? Uh, we have seven new songs that we're going to present at the uh, September 4th at the uh, Stalin Ballroom. Uh, we're going to do an entire set of all brand new songs. Maybe one or two of the older songs, and maybe one cover that we always do as a tradition at the end of the set. Uh, but most of what we'll be doing is everything that we've written in the last uh, probably four to five, six months. Cool, cool, cool. I did see you guys live a couple times and stuff like that. How do you keep your energy up on stage? <laughs> Uh, I work out a lot. <laughs> um, you know, listen, I, I think that the energy on stage is, is obviously the music has a lot to do with it. Uh, but I think that anybody that has, you know, a passion for what they're doing on stage, you know, will exhibit that kind of passion and that kind of energy to an audience. And, you know, there are guys out there that, you know, phenomenal voices, but they just can't, you know, do their thing on stage. That's one of the things I really never had a problem with. Um, and you know, when I'm up there, I kind of feel the energy of the audience. Right. Uh, the more they're into it, the more I'm into it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now you got a show coming up February 4th at Starland Ballroom uh, yep. with Leslie West, Yuli Roth. Um, can you tell me anything about that, how long your set will be, you know, and any special um, things going to go on? Uh, well, the unfortunate thing about, you know, doing any gig in a bigger venue is that we never really know how long our set's going to be. It's something that they spring on us at the last moment. Uh, in a real, you know, happy world, uh, we'll get at least 40 or 45 minutes, hopefully. Um, with that said, you know, if we had the 45 minutes, then we could actually put on a whole show, which includes, you know, all the new songs, uh, the drum solo, and, you know, a lot of talking in between that, you know, a lot of times we don't have that chance to do um, to get that, you know, one-on-one -on -one type of, uh, you know, uh, conversation, you might say, for a lack of words, with the audience. You know, I like to do a lot of interacting with the, with the audience. Um, when the sets are cut short, you know, it kind of limits what you can do and what you can't do. Cool, cool. Now, how, how can people get the tickets? Uh, you contact any member of Cashmere through Facebook. Um, you can contact me through Facebook, uh, Dean Santa, Yui, Walmart, or Keith Kalo Lopez. Uh, everybody's under the Facebook, under those titles. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so what's uh, the plans for after the Starland show? Uh, well, <clears throat> we got some big things in the work that we really can't talk about, uh, unfortunately. You know, we're, we're just dying to get it out of our, our mouths, but um, right now we're in a situation where something may evolve to put the band in a much different place. And if that happens, um, I think it's going to be real big. Um, but unfortunately... Because it hasn't been, let's say, uh, picked up by the people that we're, you know, shopping around to. Let's say that. Okay. <laughs> trying to trying to be 
around the bush right now. But if we, if we can beat around the bush and we can say that we're uh, shopping something around, let's put it that way, and if it does get picked up, it's going to be real big for the band. Cool, cool, cool. How much do the fans mean to Kashmir? Uh, the fans are everything. You know, if the fans weren't there, <clears throat> there'd be no reason to do this. I mean, quite honestly, we have the best fans in the world. Um, they followed us since we're kids. Um, you know, I think when we, we first stepped into this probably four years ago, a lot of the people that go to every single show now haven't stepped out of the house in the last 25 years. And, um, you know, we just played Irving Plaza, which was, you know, a real highlight for Kashmir as it is today uh, in their career because we were stepped on the stage and the whole audience was, I'd say, between the ages of 15 and 40. So it was a whole different audience that we had. And when I first stepped up there and I looked into, you know, right in the front row, I was like, oh, my God, how's this going to work? And the whole place went nuts. So um, it was a good feeling. It, it definitely, definitely put us in a, in a better frame of mind as far as how we're going to project our music to a younger crowd. And it worked pretty well because, you know, a lot of times you say to yourself, hey, you know, we're in our 40s right now. You know, how do we get that younger crowd to like what we're doing? You know, because let's face it, when we were all kids, we looked at 25-year-old guys like they were old. Right. You know? yep. <laughs> and now, now we're in our 40s, and, <laughs> you know, we're, it's a whole different ballgame, so. Wow, wow. Has the economy affected anything uh, in the uh, Kashmir camp? Uh, well, financially, personally, between the four of us, let's, you know, yes, it has. Um, my business uh, is definitely economy-driven. I'm a landscape contractor by trade. Um that's helped, but as far as on the music sense, no, it hasn't done anything, you know, I don't think uh, to affect the band in any way. Cool, cool. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk to about before we uh, close? Well, I just want to say thanks to all the fans if they are listening. Um, I want to say thank you to you. You've been a huge supporter, and I appreciate that very much. You've become a friend over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, um, you know, basically... <laughs> I'm not really uh, looking for Kashmir to succeed in any way, and um, we're kind of proving them wrong. And you know, I hope to to God that we just keep you know evolving the band until you know, hopefully something happens with it. Cool, cool. Congratulations, man. Thanks, Brian. Bye, bye. Have a good day. Bye.